What is going on, MJ traders and investors? Happy Friday. It is Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back in the Pursuit of Wealth for an MJ Sector review. Today's a review for Friday, June 4th. Again, it's Friday. It's been a long week. I'm excited to enjoy the weekend. And it's like I said, it's been a long week and just uh, looking forward to getting rested up and doing it all again next week. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing whether or not SNDL stock is going to be going up or down into Monday and next week. So I'll give you my thoughts on the stock, but pretty much exactly what I had mentioned in my video from yesterday, go check it out, happened. And I was very bearish and sold my position yesterday and was able to reload if I wanted to. Didn't take a position just yet. And I'll go over that in, or in detail and my reasoning why. But before we do, make sure to smash a like and subscribe to the channel as always. That shows me some support. And there wasn't really a whole lot of news to cover today. So just going to do this fairly short and sweet and uncut. So taking a look here at the previous Elliott wave count and the ABC correction that we went through, you can see here that we topped out at the 236 Fibonacci level at the 149 high. And now we're pulling back and just giving you guys an idea of what I could potentially see here, a pull back to around a dollar or just below and then we could see another third third wave up and that could bring us close to if not to a recent high here which is at 396 and then if we get our second corrective wave and maybe a back test of 175 again this isn't a crystal ball this is just a one potential scenario that could could play out and then one final push up to new all-time highs that's entirely possible um, but again it's really going to depend on the prospect of U.S. legalization, how much hype we have on that, but just want to give you guys a brief idea of what I could see on the charts and how that could play out. Again, no one knows for sure. It's just looking at the most likely scenario and taking a look at the daily bull flag today. So we did lose the 0.32 Fibonacci level, which means that we negated the daily bull flag. So it's likely going to be a tightening range and an equilibrium type of pattern. So I could see us going down a bit more into Monday and then maybe we form a lower high and then a type of tightening range, or we could form a lower high and then a lower low and a daily downtrend. So we'll just have to monitor it next week. But at the moment, it's not looking too hot. We closed at the very low of the day and we filled that gap here at 115. So I mentioned yesterday, and a lot of people were saying the short squeeze hadn't even begun, which obviously there had to have been some shorts that were squeezed going from 65 cents uh, just taking a quick look at the moving or the percentages going from 65 cents all the way up to $1.50 essentially. So a 130% move in how long? 130% move in 14 candles. So uh, just in a matter of a few weeks, we went 130%. So I was averaging into this position under a dollar. I had all the way down to 80 cents. So I had an average of about 90. So even from 90 cents, after selling at around 140, that's a 55% move to the upside. So I'm locking that in. I basically switched all of my profits into Hexo and I'm just not comfortable holding SNDL. I'm not as fundamentally bullish on SNDL. I only real reason why I played it was because I saw AMC running and Blackberry running. So how did I know that we were potentially topping out? Well, the RSIs were getting extended on all of those names. AMC had a stock raise. That, you know, kind of had me having just raised some question marks, right? And started to raise some red flags. And then again, today we found out that they said that they would be open to even more stock sales and BlackBerry was down, Sundial was down, and there was no real reason or news in my, that I'm aware of that drove this plunge in Sundial. It was just that, you know, we had no daily high or low support all the way down to 72 cents and we had no EMA support down till about 97 cents, and we could potentially find a support level around $1 psychological, but we also had that gap in the chart at 115. So I said, based on the, on the, you know, the upper wick and the, and the bearish candle yesterday, it's entirely possible that we see an inside bar, we saw the inside bar, and then we broke it bearish. So as soon as we lost 123, I said that was the level to watch. Make sure if you or watching any level, it's 123. We also had the EMAs there at 123 as well, which lined up perfectly. We had been holding it since all the way down at 72 cents. So I said, if we close a candle below EMA 12 on the hourly, that's going to be extremely notable. So on that first candle, we close below it. 
And then from there, we dropped 8%. So even if you just exited when that candle closed or as it was, you know, maybe a minute, you know, okay, it's likely going to close below now. So you initiate a sell and then you would have saved yourself another 8% of downside. But we did close near the low at, or at the low of the day and extremely bearish pullback, right? We're now down 20% from the high of the day. And from the recent high here, we're now down 26%, almost 27%. So again, uh, a lot of people were asking me why I was selling. Well, RSI was daily overbought. We had no daily higher low down till 72 cents. We had a bit of a, you know, a warning signal here with the upper wick and the gap in the chart. We also had all of our other highly shorted names that were starting to show signs of bearish reversals and just, you know, waning of momentum to the upside. So again, just taking in all these different clues, right? We knew SPY potentially was going to see downside as well. So, and, and due for daily consolidation, but SPY, check out my broader market video from earlier today, hitting a new all-time high weekly record close and confirming the daily bull flag. But we're gonna be watching for an hourly trend change now on Sundial as we did form a lower high and lower low. So basically, daily or hourly downtrend confirmed, daily consolidation underway, and we need to change the hourly trend ASAP, but we could see an EMA 12 and 26 bear cross as well. We did manage to close over the 10 week moving average at 89 cents, which is great, but MACD still yet to see a bullish cross after the stochastic has already saw, saw its cross, but uh, we held the 50 weekly moving average as well. Didn't even come close to that, but we did hold another uh, point in favor of the bulls. We held the 100 day moving average which is at 108, we closed at 109. But again, closing at the low of the day, I could see a pullback to about the 50 day moving average. And again, the $1 area, I think we could lose $1 temporarily. And then we also have the 200 day moving average down at 71, but I could see a pullback to about 90 cents and then at least set a lower high. And then if we're about to go back down to this support, it's entirely possible. But I don't, I don't see it. I think this is just healthy consolidation. And you might be wondering, what do you mean? What's healthy about this, right? We're down 20%. I thought when things drop 10, 20%, it's in a bear territory market type deal, right? But we're down 26%. But that's why I was warning everybody, this thing is going to drop 10, 20, 30%, maybe even 40, 50% once it tops out. And sure enough, from the highs, we dropped down 26%. But again, it's just a healthy daily consolidation. We filled that gap, so that is healthy. And now if we can get a daily inside bar on Monday perhaps, or see a, you know, a little bit more daily consolidation, hold the EMAs, and then form an equilibrium and then break bullish, that will cool off the RSI and we'll see if bulls can regain their composure. But we'll also be watching the other heavily shorted stocks, right? We'll be watching the rest of the sector. So the sector was weak today, which was another clue, and it was weak yesterday, right? So. Uh, there hasn't been a whole lot going on lately. So not only did we have SPY looking to potentially consolidate on the daily a couple of days ago, not only did we, ha we had the, the meme stocks cooling off, we also had the whole MJ sector week as well. So all these clues can help you, you know, with your, with your game plan and uh, just trying to make sense of it all. So on the bull and bear list, we had PWR, Love, PCLO, and VFF. On the bear list, we had NSP, SNDL, and HUGE. Taking a look at MSOS, so daily consolidation continued today, but not seeing much follow through. And we managed to close over the daily EMA. So that is a bullish sign in my opinion with some lower wicks. And we'll look to break resistance up at 4206. After that, we're looking at 4330 and 4414. But if we do lose the low of the day on Monday from today, we have a lack of support really on the daily down here until 3917 and then 3826. But the big, the big support level on the weekly is 37.56. On the bull and bear list here, we had Bioharvest, KBEV, and FLGC. On the bull list, we had NBEV, TAT, and BAM. So I'm going to end it there again, trying to keep this video a little shorter today. Going to get an early start on the weekend. Once again, happy Friday. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. And we'll do it all again next week. Thanks for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth for an MJ Sector review. And we'll see you on the next one.